walking around two thousand pounds or twenty two hundred dollars get you when it comes to a gaming PC? Well, unsurprisingly, quite a lot. So in this video, I want to run you through this one, show you the parts, maybe give you an idea of what parts you might want to switch out and take a look at its performance as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Parts-wise, let's start with the CPU, which is a Ryzen 9 3900 XT. It's the new XT variant, and if you can keep it cool, you do get a pretty reasonable performance improvement over the standard X model. It's still a 12 core CPU, which means you get excellent productivity and gaming performance, and so it's a great choice. Now, keeping it cool is the Fractal Design S24. This is hands down my favorite AIO at the moment, mostly because while it is still a standard Ace Attack design, it has a few very nice features that make it just a very nice, very quality, easy to use and well-performing AIO, including stuff like having a small uh, fan hub built onto the radiator with the lead running down the uh, one of the tubing sleeves so that you only actually need to plug in one four pin PWM fan header to power the whole thing. The motherboard I've went with here is an ASRock B550 Steel Legend. This is a great choice. Uh, I've done a full review on it if you're interested, but long story short, it's got good connectivity options, plenty of power delivery available to it, and more than enough for the 3900 XT, and is generally just a, a nice but semi-stylish option too. The RAM I'm going with here is this PNY 32 gig, uh, 3200 megahertz CL18 kits, which actually I'm going with two of them to make a total of 64 gigs, as if you're going with a Ryzen 9 3900 XT, you probably aren't just gaming. And in fact, this build is tailored towards both a, a fit for gaming and a fit for doing content creation like video editing, for example. And so that uh, capacity of RAM is very useful for those sorts of applications. Now it is still 3200 megahertz, so it is plenty fast. Of course, we would like to see 3600 megahertz and as low timings as possible, but this is a very good trade-off for having this much capacity for this style of CPU. And as for the GPU, that is also a PNY card. This is their RTX 2070 Super XLR8, and it's a very capable 1440p ultra settings gaming card with plenty of acceleration power to go with it. Storage is filled by the Sabrent Rocket 4.0, the PCIe Gen 4 SSD that is incredibly fast. It also has its own massive heatsink on it because why not? Uh, but of course you can obviously uh, append their storage with a two or four terabyte hard drive from someone like WD or Seagate for a bit of extra capacity. The power supply is currently a Coolmaster and Masterwatt E650 watt gold, which while is perfectly fine for this system, you might have difficulty finding it right now as power supply shortages are still a, a concern. So mostly get whatever you can that's 650 watts or higher and ideally a good efficiency rating. This one is a good option. It's fully modular, which is always nice to see, but see what you can find available to you. And finally, the case, of course, you can go with whatever you want, but I absolutely love the Fantex Enthu Evolve series. This is the standard Evolve, the non-tempered glass one, um, and it's just a very easy case to build in, very nice aesthetics, and while the front airflow isn't fantastic, it's still good enough to keep all the components more than cool. Now as for what you might swap out to modify this build to suit you, if you're going for a gaming only approach then I would probably drop the CPU to the 3800 XT. You can remove some of the RAM and maybe even go with a Gen 3 SSD instead of Gen 4 and then you should have plenty of money to swap out the GPU for a 2080 Super instead and get a good bit more gaming performance. Now with that said this is no slouch so let's take a look at the performance both in productivity and in gaming and see how well it does. Let's start off with the gaming results and Battlefield 5. All of these games are tested at ultra settings or you know the max they'll go and as you can see this is a very capable system. Over 120 FPS at 1080p, over or just shy of 100 at 1440 and close to 60 average at 4K as well, so a pretty comprehensively, well, decent system. When it comes to the 1% lows as well, those are pretty reasonable, and while of course you may, if you're using a higher fresh rate monitor, especially at 1440p, want to maybe turn the settings down slightly, it's still very playable. 
Same goes for COD, 129 average at 1080p and 98 average at 1440, 57 at 4K, with again good 1% lows across the board as well. These numbers are obviously specific to games and do have quite a lot of variation in them depending on test runs and you know, a lot of different factors, but suffice to say that you can pretty much stick any game on this at ultra settings and get a good 100 plus FPS, unless it's like Red Dead, but you know, exceptions. Anyway, as it comes to Battleground, this is actually a lot higher at 1080p, 162 average, although like I said, the variations are pretty dramatic, especially in these Battle Royale games where uh, being indoors can be significantly higher FPS than being outdoors and that kind of thing, but either way, you still get very capable performance, even at 1440p with 113 average, and actually slightly over 60 FPS at 4K. When it comes to Fortnite, this was actually very similar, 161 FPS average at 1080p with 103 at 1440 and 54 at 4k again with good 1% lows across the board although at least in these runs the 1080p 1% lows were a little lower than I might have liked to see but either way it's still a very capable system and like I said you can throw pretty much any game at this at most resolutions and have a very good type. When it comes to the CPU bound to productivity tasks, uh, at least starting with synthetic, in Citibench you have 505 points in single threaded score and 6,881 in the multi threaded. This is incredibly impressive and feel free to check out my reviews and comparisons to see how well that compares. When it comes to Premiere Pro, I have a 10 minute test set, a test sequence that I render out with CPU encoding only, so that's not quite as optimal as you might see, and it only took two two minutes and 23 seconds, which is quite frankly incredible. As for the BMW Blender uh, render test, this one took two minutes and two seconds, which again, you can check out my other videos to see how well that compares, but suffice to say, it's very, very good. You can pretty much do any creative task on this with relative ease. So as you would expect, a system like this performs incredibly well. Of course, if you do want to tailor it to the more gaming approach, like I said, there's some things that you can tweak for a very similar budget. And if you want to tailor it to a more creative approach, you can also tailor that too by maybe swapping out the CPU for the 3950X instead, maybe trying to squeeze some more storage and RAM in there, and even dropping the GPU to say a 2060 Super instead. Either way, that is the, the build. If you want to check out any of the parts that I've used here, I'm going to leave links to them all in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to a local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this because it definitely definitely varies right now so feel free to take a look otherwise that is pretty much it for this video if you want to see more like this one then a let me know in the comments and b hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon otherwise there are a load of other links in the description you can check out including affiliate links to people like overclockers uk if you're buying from them there's also merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, uh, VPN options and stuff like Humble Bundle, just a load of stuff that you can check out. There's also some more videos over there. I will leave the what can a thousand pound, thousand dollar PC do if you want to check that one out, if you've got a little less budget to spend, but that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, but otherwise we'll see you all in the next one.